سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين اللهم Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Nahamadu Allah Ta'ala wa nasafir wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadin abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluh Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa azwajihi Wa sahabihi ta'bi khulafan rahjin ma'adin Min ba'di wa zamati ala tahqiq Khuzza min wa alamati khulafa rasulah ala tahqiq Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar Usman wa Ali, wa ala Bakr al-Sabit tabi'in, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'in. Ya yuhal mu'min al-Hazirun, bitakullah ta'ala, wa tu inna Allah hamal ladhina, taqwa al-ladhina hum muhsinun. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil amjami mursalin, Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praises are due to Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is He who raised the heavens without any pillars that you can see. Then He established Himself above the throne. He has subjected the sun and the moon to His law. Each one runs its course for an appointed term. He arranges each matter, explaining the signs in detail that you may believe with certainty in the meeting with your Lord. And it is He who spread out the earth and set therein mountains standing firm and flowing rivers and fruit of every kind He made in pairs, two and two. He causes the night to cover the day. Indeed, in that there are signs for the people who make the fakkur. And in the earth are neighboring pilot, neighboring plots and gardens of vines and fields sown with crops and palm trees growing out of single roots or otherwise, watered with the same water. 
yet some of them we make more excellent than others to eat. Behold, verily in these things are signs for those who understand. Sadaqallah Azim. Ya Allah, bless, grant peace and blessings to our Master Muhammad wasalam, your Prophet and Messenger, and to our Master Ibrahim, your friend and intimate friend, and to our Master Musa, your close friend to whom you spoke, and to our Master Isa, your Ruh and Word, and to all your angels, messengers, prophets, the best of your creation, your pure ones, elite, and the awliya from the people of your earth and heaven. May Allah bless our Master Muhammad in quantity as great as his creation, his good pleasure, the weight of his throne, and the ink of his words as he deserves. And whenever those who remember mention him, and those who neglect his mention neglect him, and bless the people of his house and his pure family, and grant them peace. Ya Rabbi, send your peace and blessings upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who walk their path until the last day, especially upon our Mashaykh of the Tariqat al Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah and upon the noble sultans of the house of Usman. O believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by time. It is forbidden for us to waste time. In this Ramazan, in this middle 10 days of Ramazan, in these days of forgiveness, we should not waste time. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. By time, verily man is in loss, except those who have faith and do good deeds and advise each other to truth and advise each other to patience. Sadaqallah Razim. Imam al-Shafi'i radiallahu an said that this surah alone has enough guidance for all of mankind. O oh, believers, how ignorant would a man be if he allows his enemies to come inside his house to kill him? And he opened the door for them to feed them, made friends with them, and then slept while they cut his neck. But this is the reality of our condition. That is why we are in loss. Because we have opened the door to the enemies and treated them like our best friends. And we have closed the doors to the friends of Allah and treated them as enemies. This is happening at every level. In the dunya, on a worldly level, we see the believers and unbelievers, each with their own lifestyle. They have mixed. And the Muslim and Muslim governments have sold out and have failed to protect the Ummati Muhammad and they have failed to protect this deen. And we have invited the enemies of truth to raid the tables of the Muslims. As the Holy Prophet said 1400 years ago, saying to them, there will come a time when the enemies will raid your tables and tear apart what you have put in front of you like wolves, like ferocious animals. And the Sahabi Kiram, they were shocked and they said, Ya Rasulullah, is that really going to happen? He says, yes. He said, after we have come into Islam in belief, they said, yes. And they asked, is it because our numbers are going to be so small and theirs are going to be so great? He says, no. They said, is it because we don't have any means, any wealth, any resources to fight them? He says, no, we are going to be huge numbers and we will have huge wealth. And they asked him again, so what is the reason, Ya Rasulullah, that we're going to fall into such a humiliating position? And he said, it is because of the love of dunya and the hatred of death. We can see that openly with our eyes today. 
24 hours from individuals to government running for this world, running for this world, trying to catch this world as a person is trying to catch a shadow. But when it comes to the Ahirat, it is not a reality that they would even consider that could happen to them at any second. But we see death happening to us every second. And everyone has information at the fingertips to see it, but our hearts are sealed. Because when we love the dunya, we will hate the death. And those who hate the dunya, they will run towards Allah. So this is what's happening. And it's happening even closer to us in every moment when we let the enemy in. These are the politics of the outside, but there are also the politics of the inside, the politics of the batin. There are battles and wars being fought inside of us. Yet majority, they are ignorant of it and majority opposed to it. As we are remembering the battle of Badr, that the Muslims first and the most decisive battle in Islam, that they fought against the unbelievers in the most difficult of times, in the most difficult of circumstances. We should also remember that Badr is also being fought every day inside of us. We are not just this flesh that came out from a drop of dirty water. No, inside of us is the spirit, the ruh, the one that is the oldest and the most ancient in creation. That spirit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They ask you, Ya Muhammad, about the ruh. Say, the spirit is by the command of my Lord. You have been given of knowledge nothing except a little. Sadaqallah al-Azim. Yes, that spirit, it is inside of every one of us. Not only inside of the Jews, not only inside of the Christians, not only inside of the Muslims, not only inside of different nationalities that claim they are the only ones who are humans and the rest they are animals. It is inside of everyone, every humankind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever brought to this world and he will ever bring to this world. It is inside of us. And for those who are in the way of tariqat, in the way of the Prophet, alayhi he is making us to identify and to understand the enemies inside of us that are trying to kill that spirit and to steal its light and to follow shaitan to the fire inside of us is the most disobedient of creatures our nafs inside of us is a shaitan that is collaborating with our nafs guiding our nafs to destroy us inside of us are our desires that they blow like the wind to distract us from our mission in this world. Inside of us is the dunya that we have put in our heart that is turning the throne of Allah into a garbage heap. All of this is happening inside of us. But for the man who is asleep, he will understand nothing. But for the man who is awake, every moment is badr. Every moment is Karbala, and every moment is Janakala. When we are sleeping, then we turn into a puppet for our ego and shaitan to do their evil work, and we become a rebel, an open enemy to Allah. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Yasin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, doesn't man see that we have created him from a drop of dirty liquid? But look, he stands forth as an open enemy. Sadaqallahul Azim. O believers, this is Ramazan. This is a time for us to wake up. It is a time for us to understand what that enemy is and to fight those enemies inside. It is a time for us to wake up and to begin to fight that real jihad, that jihad al-Akbar, 
the jihad against our nafs. Understand the stakes of this fight. If we lose, then we are counted as those who have made a hidden shirk and as slaves to our ego. As our Shaykh, Sahib al Sahib Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabrisi, Ya Rabbani, Qadasallah Siri is saying, when you are fighting against the pleasure of your ego, then you are reaching somewhere. When you are fighting against the pleasure of your ego, then you are reaching somewhere. Otherwise, you are worshipping your ego. You have two places you are worshipping now. When you are worshipping to two places, what are you doing? Shirk. So many Muslims today are making shirk, hidden shirk. Holy Prophet والسلام, is saying that will be a hidden shirk when you are going to aim to worship Allah, but you are going to do what your ego wants. So then you are worshipping your ego. Our Grand Shah is saying when you are worshipping to two gods, kill one of them, destroy one of them, and turn yourself to one. Our ego, our egos are declaring themselves lords next to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created has ever declared himself to be an ilah, to be a lord, except for that creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created that he has put inside of us to be in ghaflat and to slip into obedience of the ego. It is in reality to serve and worship a pretender that is declaring lordship next to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As our Grand Shaykh Shaykh Malana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani Qadasallah is saying, every prophet, every prophet brought methods from Allah Almighty for training our ego so that we can say, Oh my Lord, I surrender to you. But your ego says to Allah, No, I will not surrender. When Allah asked our ego, Who are you? The ego answered, I am myself and you are yourself. You are you and I am myself. So Allah Almighty ordered for the ego to be put into fire for 1,000 years. He then took the ego out and asked the same question. The ego replied, you are you and I am me. So he was ordered to put into the cold part of hell for 1,000 years after which he was asked, who are you? And the ego answered in the same way as before. Then it was ordered for it to be put into the valley of hunger for 1,000 years. After a few days, he was called again and asked again the same question. And this time it replied, you are my Lord and I am your servant. The ego always saying, I have Lordship. Lordship is only for Allah. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, brought the order from Allah for fasting. When it comes to hunger, the ego comes down and says, no longer am I claiming to be Lord in front of you. I am your weak servant and you are my Lord. The one who can't control himself is terrible and dangerous. Fasting gives you the capability to put control on your ego so that it listens to you. You may say, do, and it does, or say, stop, and it stops. Therefore, from the beginning up to the end, fasting is the main pillar of servanthood. Without it, no one can reach to be a real servant because the ego is always winning otherwise. He takes a ride on your back and says, follow me. No believers, we are in the days and nights of Ramadan when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the gift of fasting which weakens our ego. We now have the chance to take our ego back into our hands and to ride our egos instead of letting it ride us. But who is going to teach you how to ride your ego? This is not a skill that you can get from books or from the internet. 
or from our imagination. When you go to a horse that is wild and unbroken, you cannot just sit on it and try to ride it. It will throw you off and break your neck. Now you need to go to a master who is going to show you how to train it. When you are in the war, you need to be under the command of a general who is going to tell you where to go and what to do and when to do. When you are in this greatest war, the Jihad al-Akbar against your ego, you must have a guide. Our guide is the Holy Prophet والسلام, and he has left that guidance and he has left that secret to the Sahabi Kiram to continue who then passed it to the Tabi'in, who then passed it to the Tabi Tabi'in until the last day. This is Ahli Sunnah wa Jama'ah. This is the way of the people who follow the tradition of the Prophet. Never the Sahabi Kiram saying, I go directly to Allah. Never the Tabi'in saying, I go directly to the Prophet. Never the Tabi Tabi'in, they say, I go directly to our Lord. They all say, we took this knowledge from them, who took it from them, who took it from the Prophet, who took it from Allah. Our Shaykh is saying, don't say to yourself, I know, I don't need anything. I don't need any teacher and I don't need any guide. I can clean myself. You cannot. You cannot even find this building by yourself. If we didn't tell you where we were, then you wouldn't even find this address, this room. There are so many rooms and so many apartments in this building. You cannot find it by yourself. And this is just the world. This is dunya, the paradise. If you know the paradise, then you start shivering again because you don't want to get lost in the paradise too. You want to go to your place where you have been designated. You cannot be running around wildly. Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is in order. 21st century people, from young people to old people, they are saying, I don't need a guide and I don't need a teacher. I don't need a plan. Don't I have my five senses? Don't I have my intelligence? Don't I have a phone that has all the information in the world at my fingertips? Why should I go sit and associate with some man who is going to tell me that I am wrong? Who is more intelligent than the proof of Islam, Hujatul Islam? Imam Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali. Who can say? Who was the greatest professor in the greatest university in the whole world at his time with knowledge of all the dunya knowledges and religious knowledges but he himself realized that he could not trust his intelligence in this jihad al-akbar in this waking up to control his ego he said how could i trust evidence from my senses sight to see with our eyes is our most powerful sense. But we can stare at a shadow and conclude that it is fixed and it doesn't move. But at the end of an hour of observation, we see that the shadow moved, not all at once, but gradually, and that it was never actually fixed. The eye looks at a star and sees it as small as a coin, whereas it is in reality bigger than the earth. This showed me that trusting my senses leads to a judgment which reason itself shows as totally based on error. If you cannot even trust your eyes, then who or what can you trust? Listen to this incident. Imam Fahruddin Razi who was one of the greatest scholars of Islam, was about to pass from this world. And shaitan came to his deathbed. This is a part that nobody is talking about. When you're about to pass, how the shaitan is going to come, how your ego is going to be crazy, how your desires are going to be crazy, trying to trick you. So shaitan came to him. And he, won, he was one of the greatest scholars of Islam. 
And Shaitan said, How do you know that Allah exists? He asked him. And Imam al Razi, he started debating with Shaitan on his deathbed. He gave a logical proof for Allah's existence. But then Shaitan started to debate him and cut down his point. Again, they went back and forth, back and forth until Shaitan had cut down 100 arguments that Imam Razi had. Imam Razi, who was about to die, he was getting so tired and hopeless that he almost was going to lose his faith. This is real. This is not a story. This is real. But he had a shaykh. And his shaykh's voice came to his heart and said, O oh my murid, tell that shaitan that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the need for any proof. When Mimal Razi said that, shaitan ran away because he knew there was no more room for doubt in the Imam's heart. O oh believers, have we taken someone to help us, to guide us? That someone who has been trained by his shaykh in a tradition of over 1,000 years, that one who is keeping the sunnat alive, that one who is keeping and protecting the shariat, that one who is not asking for anything. Because shaitan is making attacks on our faith, minute by minute. Have we taken anyone as our helper? Anyone who has fought shaitan? Anyone who has conquered their ego to teach us how to do the same? If we have not, then we have a long, difficult, lonely road to walk. If not, then when Dajjal comes, we are going to be fooled very easily. We were not sent to this world to turn it into a paradise for ourselves. Our home was paradise. Our original home, it's in paradise. But because of the disobedience, we were kicked out of our home. This dunya, it is the place of exile is a place of sadness and difficulty. This dunya, it is a prison. This dunya, for the believers, is a place of homesickness. That even if this dunya is turned into everything that is giving you pleasure, you are going to be homesick because this is not your home. This is dunya. It is a place of test. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, be sure that we will test you with something of fear and hunger, some loss in goods or lives or crops, but give good tidings to the patient. Sadaqallah al-Azim. Those who say when a disaster strikes them, indeed, we belong to Allah and to Him is our return. Such are they on whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy. Such are the rightly guided. Sadaqallah al Those who came before us, they were tested. O oh, Muslims, don't think that we are going to be free from that test. In reality, the people of the Ahir Zaman, we are facing the biggest test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever put in the face of this earth as the Prophet was warning his companions 1400 years ago saying that even those who are buried in the cemetery they are going to be tested. But many are silent. Many are letting the ummat to sleep and not to wake them up. Allah has guaranteed that we're going to be tested. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Do men imagine that they will be left alone because they say we believe and that they will not be tested. We did test those before them and Allah will certainly know 
who are the truthful and who are the false ones. Sadaqallah al-Azim. We are just in the anniversary of the day of the biggest test of the first believers, the battle of Badr. It was a test. It was a huge test. It is a test between Haq and Batil. It is a test for those who had nothing, who left everything. As our Shaykh was saying, some, they were even grabbing sticks and stones in their hands to fight in this war because they did not even have enough weapons. They did not have enough horses. They did not have enough camels, nothing to fight it. But they had Allah and they had their Prophet and they had their faith in them. <coughs> and they were truthful and they were patient. Understand who was in that battle. Who were those 313 believers? Understand who were the Muhajirun that for 13 years in Mecca they went through every hardship that you can imagine. They went through persecution. They went through torture, beatings, starvation, murder, imprisonment, death of wives, death of husbands, death of mothers, death of children. Why? Because they said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They could have made it end so easily. They could have just said, we believe in the idols again. They could have just said, we reject Muhammad But they didn't. Allah tested their faith and their faith proved true because they were patient. And for 13 years, they built a community. They learned how to follow their prophet, their guide with complete submission. They learn to take away doubt from their hearts. They learn how to function together as a community. They learn how to help each other, to love each other, although they were not related to each other. Although one was a master and one was a slave. Although one was rich and one was poor. Although one was white and one was black. They learned to love because they loved the Prophet and they loved Allah. Through that suffering that must come with that love, they sowed the seeds of Islam. And those seeds it gave fruit when they moved to Medina. But those seeds, they were not watered. They were not watered with atar and rose water. They were watered with blood and the sweat of sacrifice. Those are the men who were in Badr. The angels did not come to help them for nothing. The angels came to help the Ashab al-Badr because the Ashab al-Badr were themselves the masters of the angels. Look at Sayyid al-Kainat, Hazrat Rasulullah He was rejected by his family in Mecca, rejected by his family in Taif. He lost his beloved wife, Hazrat Hatija, one of his strongest supporters. He lost his protector, Hazrat Abu Talib. He watched his followers be beaten and tortured and die because they believed in him. He did not open miracles for them every day to see. And he told them, be patient. Be patient. And they came to Medina with a new hope. But now the Kufar, who were his family, who were his people, who were the ones, just yesterday they were loving him. They came with that hatred in their heart to destroy him and to destroy them and to destroy Islam. Understand, he had already gone on Miraj at the time of Badr. He had already stood beyond Sidratul Muntaha and spoken with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time. Did he just say, I am the master of the first and the last? I am the Saibul Miraj and the Saibul Kaba Kausain and I take victory that is guaranteed for me in this battle of Badr? He did not. 
He was praying all night, crying all night, pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all night. And when he came to the battlefield, he saw that the Muslims were only 313 and that the Kufar, they were 1,000. He turned to face the Qibla and he put his hands into us saying, Ya Allah, grant me what you have promised me. Ya Allah, give me what you have promised me. Ya Allah, if this small group of Muslims, they finish, you will not be worshipped on the earth. And Hazrat Umar is saying that he kept crying, raising his hands until his burda, his cloak, fell off his shoulders. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq came and put the cloak back on the Holy Prophet wasalam, and hugged him and said, Ya Rasulullah, this prayer of yours to Allah is enough for you because Allah will fulfill what He has promised you. He is showing us what is in Abdullah. He is the greatest in creation. Yet He says, Call me Abdullah. And He is inviting the way of the Abdullah to all of us, especially in this Ahir Zaman. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the help. And he's saying in the Holy Quran why he sent it. Saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Remember, remember you begged the help of your Lord. And he answered you saying, I will help you with a thousand of the angels, rank on rank. Allah made it but a message of hope and an assurance to your hearts. Victory comes only by the help of Allah and Allah is mighty, wise. Sadaqallah al-Azim. O believers, we must ask Allah for help. We must beg Allah for help. Don't ask Allah for help. Don't beg Allah for help as a Lord. Don't beg for His help as an oppressor. Don't beg for His help as someone who is lost in love with the dunya. Ask for His help as our Prophet did, as an Abdullah. These are the days to ask. And he did not ask for victory to come so that he can vanquish the enemies and he can have power and rule over this earth. He asked for help so that the name of Allah will be remembered on the face of this earth and people will worship to Allah. His victory was for Islam. These are the days of Ramadan. We're asking Allah for help, for victory against the enemies of Islam, inside and outside. And Allah's help will come. Listen to the eternal message of hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to us in the Holy Quran saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When my servants, when my servants ask you about me, I am indeed close to them. I listen to the prayer of the asker. And when he cries out to me, so let them hear my call and let them trust in me in order that they may be rightly guided. Sadaqallah al We should run to Allah in these remaining days of Ramadan to connect ourselves to the Habib, to those ones whom he loves. We're asking Allah to end the oppression in this world, to end the pain and injustice of this world. We're asking Allah to bring the ruling of Islam back into this world. We're asking Allah to bring the ruling of the Shariat back into this world. We're asking Allah to bring those ones who are beloved to Him to rule in this world. We're asking Allah to bring down the shaitans and the Dajjals. We're asking Allah to make the Ummah to wake up. We're asking Allah for forgiveness for all the wrong that we have done to them and to the Prophet and to Him. We're asking Allah to make us to be forgiving to each other. 
We're asking Allah to make us to be strong, to fight against the enemies that are inside of us. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim. Lazim. La ilaha illallah. 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 La ilaha لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد كل شيء كريم لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد كل شيء كريم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين سبحان الله كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة تمر سبحان الله كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة سبحان الله كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة إن دين إن الله الإسلام خم سلا Allah'u Ekber, 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 Allah'u Ekber,